Today I'm with John Kane, head coach of New Horizon Boxing Club. Appreciate you doing this, John. What's the status of the club and how are you doing at the moment? Cheers, mate. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, uh, it's been a bit, uh, obviously we're in the Isle of Man, so it's a little bit of a different from uh, the UK. Uh, last year we had a we had one lockdown in March, like everyone, March to April, and then all, all summer, right through last year, we were open, gym was open, everything was back to normal, and then since Christmas we've had two lockdowns, we're in a lockdown now, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, we, we, we were getting used to uh, normal life really, and then we've, we've gone back, back down to lockdown, it's got to be done, you know, hopefully we can get through this. Definitely, hopefully so. Uh, and with the vaccinations, it looks like things will improve. Now, just for people who are watching this who may not know, the Isle of Man, uh, that's an island, isn't it? That's in between England and Ireland, um, as the crow flies. What's the island like, John? Yeah, it's a nice place to live. I've been here about 30 years. I, I'm originally from Merseyside, and I also lived in Jersey before I come here, so uh, a, bit of a, a bit of an island hopper last few years. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice place to live, nice place to bring up your kids. Obviously, uh, when it comes to boxing, there's only two boxing clubs on the island, uh, so it, it, there's not, it's not a big sport on the island. Uh, but, you know, we, we do okay. So, yeah, you've got a population of about 85,000, haven't you? Yeah, that's right, about 80-odd 80, 80 thousand. Uh, and uh, like I said, we've got two clubs. Uh, we're probably the smaller one out of the two clubs. Uh, we've only just been formed about two years ago. And we were just getting nice and steady going along. And then this hit, coronavirus, we were looking to put our first show on. And uh, we've just, I think we were looking at last March, April time. And then corona uh, hit us. Now, your club's relatively new, like you said. But you've been in boxing a long time, haven't you? And um, you was head coach at Manx ABC for... 20 years? Yeah, yeah. So I've probably been coaching. I think I've done my first badge. Uh, I think I've done that in 97. So what's that, about 20, 25 years from that? So yeah, uh, coached for about 25 years. It was Manx ABC for 20 years. And then in 2016, 2017, I had a, a bad knee. I uh, had a knee operation. I had a knee, knee surgery. So I took a bit of time out of the sport. And when I came back, it, I just looking for a new challenge. And then I got talking to one of my ex boxers, who was a school teacher. He had something go. wanted to do something at his school, so I started a new thing up and I started a new club up. Just before we go on to your new club, what were your fond memories of your old club at Manx ABC? Yeah, yeah. So we, we had a great time, Manx ABC. Well, when I first come to the island, uh, it was it was. Uh, you know, I can't say uh, too much. It was it was quite hard uh, to get off the island to to get lads enough bounce to get the experience to go into championships and then ultimately because the Alamank can represent themselves at the Commonwealth Games. We come under England boxing, so we're an England boxing club. But when it comes to the Commonwealth Games, we can represent represent ourselves. So that's the highest level that an Alamank boxer can reach. So for me, that was our goal. And we were lucky to achieve that. And uh, so I was lucky to go to five Commonwealth Games as a as head coach and my team manager. The team manager side of it, basically, we only ever had one or two boxes. So the team manager uh, dovetails with uh, your duties as head coach. But the great thing about that is, which is different than, than other nations, like the big nations like Scotland, England, Wales, is the boxes I took, as national coach with, with my club boxes. So I had, uh, where normally you, you get a club box and we've had uh, a, a lad who's boxed for England and it's great, you know, you hand your, your boxer over to the England coaches and they go off to the tournaments and it's great for that boxer. But for us in the Alamein, I had the opportunity to take kids that I'd box, that I trained from grassroots right to the podium to win medals at Commonwealth Games. And one of those was Matthew Rennie. Who, who won the silver medal, didn't he, at the Commonwealth uh, Youth? Uh, what was that experience like? It was a great experience. And when you got to think about Matthew's journey, that was 2015. That was my fifth Games. So when I when you go back to 2008, when we first went to the Commonwealth Youth Games, that was the first boxer in 50 years to represent the Alamana at any Commonwealth Games. So it was a bit of a big gap, and it was a big learning curve for us. 
as as an association, as as a group, uh, as a coach for me and the boxers. And for me, it, all them other games, and I'm not saying them guys who went to the other games never had a chance of winning medals. If they got a good draw, maybe they would have. But for me, it was always leading up to what would come in in the future. And when we got to to that position, when we had a boxer who qualified for Samoa. We were more educated around what to do. We talked, you know, we knew, I knew exactly what I was going to do about preparation, about uh, camps, about development. Opened the year before, and the good thing about Matthew, we knew a year before. Sometimes when you're qualifying for an event, you don't know like till about six to eight weeks before. But with Matthew, we, we'd qualified in the ABA Championships the year before. Was he very, very talented? Yeah, yeah, he's a great kid, and he's. He's undefeated as a pro now. He's signed for VIP. So uh, he's actually back on the island in a minute uh, with COVID. I think he was, he's boxing out of the Solly in Liverpool. And I think with COVID, it was just, you know, it was nothing much happening uh, in Liverpool. And, and he had the opportunity to come back to the Isle of Man. He's back with his family. So, uh, he, and he's been coming down to our gym, doing a little bit of training, just ticking over really while, when we were open. Now, talking about your club there, New Horizon, how would you describe it? It looks like a very good facility that you've put together. Yeah, so funny enough, it's, it's, it's funny how things work out, isn't it? So we, I, I left, I left the Mike ABC, I, I started up in a school. Like I, I mentioned, one of my boxers, a guy called Dominic Winrow. Now, Dominic Winrow went to the Commonwealth Games with me. He went to Delhi 2010. But Dominic Winrow was the first and only boxer for the Isle of Man to reach an elite final. He reached uh, the 2010 Super Heavyweight Final. And he, meet, he met a fella called Anthony Joshua. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. So, so Dominic, great guy. Uh, you know, he, he's an educated guy. He went to university. So he, he's a teacher now. So he was my first. So like, uh, he said to me, I want to do something at my school. I was looking at new, op new, new challenges. So yeah, I moved to the school. Anyway, we moved. Uh, the school really didn't suit to, uh, to run a club out of great to do classes but not a club and then I went to another gym I got an opportunity to go to a gym and then the Manx ABC moved from the original gym that I was head coach at and I got the opportunity to take that over so I'm back where the stars are <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny how things work out isn't who's it, it aimed at John is it just boxers is it mainly a boxing club or do you want fitness there as well yeah, I'm, 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 I'm more around that side of it, and it's, it is what it is. You know, you've got. You, it, it all depends on what what your costs are, isn't it? If if you if you've got to make money, you've got to make money. You've got to go out to finish. We do have a few key fitters come in, but mostly I'm I'm all about amateur boxing, and I'm and, and that's my key focus. But you know, we do have a few key fitters, and they paid away, and it's. But the costs on the gym we've got at the minute, they're not massive. So I, I don't need to really go out and uh, sell it and, and run all kinds of sessions. And it's also, it's getting it, getting the coaches to do, because we're all volunteers, as yourself, as you know yourself. I've been to your club, uh, Ashley VIP, and I know Damien and all the guys quite well. So, you know, you know yourself. It, it's sorry right, I'm putting these classes on. It's then getting the good coaches, qualified coaches, to give up their time to run them. So, you know, at the minute, we're, we're doing okay. Yeah. And what age groups, what age did they start at your club? Yeah, so my, I say nine. I, we, we've got a, we got an age category for nine. We were looking at doing like a young Rockies class, but that just doesn't materialise at the moment. Maybe we can go down that route. But at the moment, I say nine because obviously, you know, you still need to come box and tell. You can have skills back from the 10. So, you know, yeah. You know, and it just comes down to the the amount of coaches we've got, the size of the facility. So I say no, I mean, that's that's kids yeah. to start on that. And mentioning the need for support of other coaches, so have you got good support at New Horizon? Yeah, so well, one uh, great thing about the Isle of Man, it, it's quite a few, quite a bit of money over here. And our sponsors, we've had different sponsorship and, and you know, there's been great. And uh, so... Uh, funding from governments and, and that kind of stuff is probably a little bit, there's not that much of that going around because uh, there's a lot of other sports that are probably more high profile and us like cycling, you know, they've got a world-class cycling programme in the Ironman. So, uh, so 
Oh, so like we, you know, we'll always look cap in hand to company sponsorship, and um, we've done really well. And um, but that that coupled with the main thing for us is putting shows on. Once you start putting shows on, and it, you know dinner shows, things like that, we can raise money because we need to raise money to travel. And then a lot of the times when we're putting a show on the Alman, we need to pay for the team to come over because not a lot will pay their own way and not a lot can pay their own way. And what about other coaches? You don't run it on your own, do you? No, no. So uh, one of my one of my ex-boxers, uh, a guy called Christian Beruski, who had, I think had, a, had about 180 fights. Uh, he, he was Polish and he came to us. I think he had about 130 when he came to us. And it was probably uh, his... Uh, about 30, 40 with us. So he's, he's close to 180 bouts. Uh, he went to two Commonwealth Games. You know, so he, he's a great guy. And the great thing about it is, you know, he's from Poland. I'm on my side. I just leave him. I just leave him to it. I know he's he's comes from the same book as what I come from. Get the basics right before we start trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, you know, get the basics right. So, you know, yeah, so I've got a good coach there. And we've got another couple that was supposed to go on the course this year, but everything's been put on hold, as you know. So, uh, and I've got, yeah, so we've got, we've got a couple of new ones coming through and I've got probably the most experienced boxer the other man has ever had now coaching. And what do you love about the coaching side? Obviously, you've been a coach for many, many years now. What do you love about it? I, I love that, that process about bringing kids from, from, the, from the grassroots right through. And then you always get told, and you remember, even when I was a kid, you know, get sent down a boxing club, you got you got your bullies sent down a boxing club to try and straighten them out. You've got your timid kids, try and give them a bit of confidence. And I love, you know, and to be truthful, it's great when they, they both end up on the same level playing field. You know, they never start the same, do they? But they, they might end the journey at the same level. And it's great. I, and I think I'd probably take more pride out of taking that timid kid and giving them that confidence. And it's not about producing champions. It's, you know, I, I go out now, I go to, to the local pub and I see, see guys that, are, you know, maybe had two or three fights. They come up, shake my hand, say, hi, John, how are you doing? It was great what you've done for us. And, and that's brilliant. And that's not even anything to do with producing champions. We all like to produce champions. But they're just, just nice kids. You remember what you've done for them. And they've gone on and they've got a good job, they're married with kids and stuff like that. And then things like that, I take pride in that as well. And boxing in itself, John, we, we know physical, it obviously it makes it's one of the best fitness regimes going. But when I do these videos around the world, mental health comes up time and time again. How do you think boxing helps that? Yeah, so I think boxing... Uh, indirectly has a lot of effect on people uh, socially, uh, you know, and it, that, that's one of them, I think. Uh, you know, I, I, we went on, I went on a uh, mental health workshop about a year ago, just before the pandemic. So uh, trying to just basically, to, to, so I could understand a little bit about it. We had one of our boxers who who'd had issues and he'd actually, he spoke up about that and he's done an article in the local newspaper it was uh, Matthew Rennie's young brother Sam, and you know that. So for me, uh, I, I needed. I thought I needed a little bit of education on that uh, that front. But you know, I, I think, uh, I, and, I, and I wouldn't try to profess to, you know that I've got any answers or all the answers. But I think it's just get them something to do. Get you know, get them interested. You know, I, you know, I think at idle minds maybe you start. You, you know, you start thinking about things or overthinking things. I don't know. It's uh, we just do what we do, don't we? And we hope that we have a positive impact on the young kids that come into the gym. Yes, definitely. And um, which countries do you go to? Obviously, you come to England, uh, Scotland, and Wales, I presume. And do you go over to Ireland as well? But we go everywhere. We've been to uh, so club-wise, we've been to Denmark a few times. I've been to a few box cups in Denmark, Ireland a few times, but mostly England. We come under the northwest. Uh, region, so uh, we box in our championships, same area as you, Northwest region. So we try and get out and about. But uh, internationally, I've had the, I've been to India twice boxing, uh, two Commonwealth Games in India, Samoa, New Zealand. Uh, so no, yeah, I've actually been around a little bit, so that's, I've had a uh, great time.
Now, going to your boxing career now, you boxed when you was younger. Um, was was that a club in Liverpool, and uh, how did that go? Yeah, so there's, it, I, I'm from uh, I'm from over the water, so I, what we call over the water. I'm from the Wirral, so I was uh, at West Wirral Boxing Club, and I was in and out a little bit as a kid. You know, uh, I, it's easy to say now I was a bit of a scallywag when I was younger, and I probably didn't, you know, give it everything I should have. So I, I sort of drifted in and out of boxing. Uh, had a few come out, you know, and I, I was up to no good sometimes, and I was a bit of a lad. Uh, and then in, in 1983, I sort of like said, I'm going to get away from this, you know, uh, get into trouble with the police and all that. And I went to Jersey. And then it was then that I hadn't been in the gym for a, a couple of years. And then it, in Jersey, there was, everyone was going out drinking, having a good time. I thought, I'd get back down to the gym, get fit. And, you know, you, once you know boxing, you know boxing. You can go into any boxing gym in the, in the world, can't you? Get your skipping rope out, go on the bag. And before, before you know where you are, they're having a look at you. They're saying you want to box, and I, and I, I ended up boxing again for Jersey. So you know, I, I had a few, one, for some, lost some. I, not, not, not a, not a great thing. But what, what I've learned from that is, and I, and I think I've carried through now into my coaching is, I know you learn from your mistakes, from why, I, why I didn't uh, give it everything when I, because it's all right looking back now. I'm sixty this year. And then that once then that youth is gone, you're never getting them back, are you? Them years, you're not getting them back. So the, as kids, you can't hard to say to kids, you know, this is the best years of life, which it is, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Great. So, uh, yeah, so I, I think that's probably one of the main big things I've took from my uh, career. So as a boxer, I should have took it seriously when I did. Now, you've had a very successful coaching career. Which early coach had an influence on you? What's the one? I think there's there been, been quite a few, and I've took a little bit from it, every one of them. Uh, for instance, uh, when I was with West Whittle, there was two, uh, there was a, a father, father and son called the Bowkers, and it was old school. You know, the first day in the gym, you went and you, you, you sparred. But you're talking about 1970s here, uh, the gyms were chocker, the gyms were full, and the first thing they found out in Merseyside was could you fight? Wasn't could you could you box? Could you fight? And once they knew that, they, they, they taught you how to box. When I went to Jersey, it was the other way around. You know, a, a middle class uh, uh, place, Jersey, nice kids. You know, they, and the coach, they, you didn't spar for weeks and weeks. And I was remember going in and thinking, that's all laid back, isn't it? And so that was another, another, so I learned from that coach, a guy there it's called Brian Russo. He was a lovely guy, a great guy. So I learned from a, both of them, really. And I suppose my coaching uh, techniques and whatever ethos is that is probably a little bit of both. You know, a little bit, you've got to have a bit of toughness, hard work, but also you've got to look after your kids as well. And don't forget, we haven't got, uh, we're in Alamann. We haven't got hordes and hordes of uh, kids coming off council estates looking to box every week. You know, so we've got to look after. It. We've got to nurture what we have a little bit more. Now, you Aiba accredited uh, national coach as well. How do you get that qualification, John? Yeah, so uh, you, you, you've got to be put forward by your, your governing body. So. I even brought in a few years ago. So the first Commonwealth Games I went to, there was no, it was a national coach, a national coach. But I even brought in a, in the last few years, they brought in a, their own coaching standards, where you've, you it goes for one to three, one star, two star, three star. So you've got to be a minimum of one star to be able to do the corner of the Commonwealth Games, and it's got more strict. So from uh, the Isle of Man's point of view, as a national coach going to Commonwealth Games. I needed that qualification, so that's why I that's why I went for it. Really, that's that I've got to one. I haven't got to two yet. But to be truthful, since I've started my own club, I've took a backward step from the national side of it and the Commonwealth Games Committee and all that. I'm trying to concentrate a little bit on on my on my club, get my club up and running before I so I if I go back to that. And now, keen are you for it to get back to normal so that club can run normal again? Yeah, we, you know, we, we were doing okay there. We, just after Christmas, we started, we had a little lockdown, we started back up again. Jim was flying, it was chocker. We think we'd done about three weeks full and then we stopped again. So, you know, it, it, it is sad that, you know, 
the, but the one thing I would say about it, everyone will probably think, oh, you've done all right, the animal man. At least you've been able to train. But the kids have got nowhere to go, so the kids know that they can't train. So uh, me carded boxers, the guys I've got ready to box, they sort of like I can see in them they've they've lost their motivation, they've lost that. Maybe some of them have come in and out the gym a little bit. And how can I turn around and say, oh, you need to be training three, four nights a week? And they're saying, well, there's no boxing, is there? So <laughs> you can't lie to them, can you? They, they know what's going on. So it's it's been it's been uh, sort of double edged, really. It's been great that we have been able to do a lot of training on the island, but also the kids know that they've got nowhere to go. So it's been it's been uh, difficult outside. So yeah, we're just hoping that it can all get back to normal and hopefully the vaccination program can can do something about that. And you know, late, later on in the summer, maybe uh, you know, September, maybe we can all be back as normal. And what would you say to a parent who's thinking of sending their child to uh, New Horizon Boxing Club? Yeah, it, so one thing I would say uh, with the with parents, you don't really understand amateur boxing, and they don't like what I've just what I've just explained to you there about when I first went to a boxing club, getting thrown in a boxing ring the first night. That probably happened to their, their dads or their you know or their uncles or whatever. And that's just the memories they've got. Amateur boxing is different now, especially in our club. You know, you give your kids. You know, they might never spar, they might not never box, they might not never, but they'll they'll get fit and. It's uh, just trust us, uh, come down and see us, have a look, chat with me, and, uh, you know, I'll put your mind at rest. But in the end of the day, the kid's got to want to do it. It's all like the parents sending the kid down. The, the kid will, you know, the kid, if the kid doesn't want to do it himself, you know, he, he won't do it. They won't do it. And what would you say, we, we focus on children a lot of the times when I ask that question, but what would you say someone older who wants to have a go with it? Yeah, obviously it's great when you're a kid because you, you you can get you know you get all the basics done when you're only young and you're learning. But you know we've had some real success from guys that come in in the in the late twenties and they've done well, all right. They haven't gone on and had you know 50, 60, 70 bouts, but you know they've done okay. And you know it's it's there's a you know when our doors are open to all kinds, to everyone. And the last question, John. It's a very intense sport. I always repeat that, but uh, it is, especially for head coaches. You know, it can take up a lot of your time. What is it about the sport of boxing that is your passion? Yeah, so, so someone uh, asked me, one of the dads asked me a few years ago, he said to me, why do you do it? Why do you do all you do? Because don't forget, uh, you've got a club coach in, in the UK, in Manchester, Liverpool, and they give up a lot. Well, look, well, we go, we, when, when we go to a show, we've got to stay over three, four nights. To, uh, I, I know I'm self-employed. No, you know, I'm, I'm losing money and all that. So this dad said to me, why do you do it? And I, I had to think about it. <laughs> for why, why am I doing it? And I, you know what I said? Because someone done it for me. Mm. And that's, and, and he just went, yeah. And I, I appreciate that coach who's done it for me. That's Scally White kid who I was. And look at me now, I've done all right for myself. And, you know, uh, but, you know, and I think that, and that's probably the best answer I can get. The reason I do it is because I appreciate what that guy done for me. Well, that's a great answer that, John. All the best when you arise and when it opens, which hopefully will be soon. All the best. Yeah, all right, mate. And, and we hope to see you again. And you ask me when I uh, come over for a bit of sparring and, uh, and I'm sure I'll see you on the scene.